All right, so today we're going to cover how to create a ADO to Azure service connection. I'm going to show you two ways, one which is called the ARM automatic and the other is ARM manual. Okay, to get started, you're inside your project, you go to project settings, you want to go to service connections, create service connection, ARM or Azure Resource Manager, have that highlighted, click on next. And as you can see, we have two options for service principle automatic and manual. These two are the ones that we're going to cover. So right before we begin, you see that automatic is actually the recommended way for um, Microsoft. I actually disagree with that, and I'll explain that later, but let's go ahead and get started anyway. So we're going to choose a scope level subscription. As you can see, it'll autofill whatever subscription you have available. In this case, I only have the one, so the dropdown is just going to show the one. The next option is to choose a resource group that you want to target. In this case, we're going to choose YouTube RG01. And just for simplicity's sake, let's just make sure that the service connection name matches with the resource group name. You can give an optional descri um, description. I would check grant access permission to all pipelines so that you have ease of use. And that's it. If you hit setup, you're going to see that inside Azure AD, it's actually going to create a service principle that's tied to the service connection. So here we are inside my Azure AD. You'll see that I have just this automation test SPN, which I'm already using. If we refresh it, we see a new service principle that was created that is tied to the ADO service connection that we just created. And one way to verify that is you see this name over here as well as the application object ID. Let's go ahead and compare it inside ADO. So here we are back in ADO. If we go click on the service connection that was created, you see that we have uh, an option to check the service principle that's tied with the service connection. So now that we're here, if we were to go back and forth, we see that yes, indeed, they have the same name, but more importantly, they have the same exact application ID as I continually toggle from screen to screen. We see that they have the same object ID. So they are in fact the same SPN. Okay, so I'm gonna cover the two reasons why I don't like using the recommended route of using automatic SPN. First and foremost, if you go to Certificates and Secrets, you see that a secret was created that's in use to make the connection between ADO Service Connection and Azure DevOps. But this secret is no longer retrievable. So if I wanted to use the same um, SPN for something else in Pipeline or anywhere else, I would have to create a new secret. And now you have two secrets and it's just clunky and unnecessary. The second reason that I don't like it is if you were to create another service connection, say for example, we go over here and we hit automatic again, the subscription loads and we pick another uh, resource group, in this case 08, and we type in YouTube RG08, same settings, and we create this. You're going to see that inside Azure uh, AD, it's going to create a, another service principle that has just access to the resource group that you targeted here. So now you have two SPNs that are created, one that has access to resource group one, the second one that has access to resource group eight, right? The big issue here is that they're gonna have the same exact name and now you could change the name, which I'll show you how to do as well, but it doesn't change the fact that it's gonna start getting clunky because you're doing it per resource group. And yes, you could technically give access to the already created SPN to the other resource groups, but it's just, it's just a messy way to start with. Okay, so here we are back inside Azure AD. Let's give it a refresh. And we see that another SPN was created. This one is pointing to resource group eight. It is in fact different, obviously. And if you go back here, they have the same name by default. So you'd have to go back here, manually say that this one is for resource group one, and this is for resource group eight. And that's why I think the recommended route is not the best option. It is the quickest way to get started, but for longevity and best practices, it would be better to create uh, a new SPN that sole purpose is to be a service connection from ADO to your Azure subscription. Okay, so let's get started by creating the app registration first. So we're going to go to Azure AD, app registrations, new registration. We're just going to call this Codoge YT automation. Everything else you can, you know, leave as a default. You can change it as you need to. And now that we have this app service created, I'm sorry, app registration created, 
you'll see that if we go to certificate and secrets, we don't actually have any secret generated yet. So that's great because we can create a new one and actually keep track of it this time. Okay, so let's click on new client secret. We'll give the secret a name. We'll just call it 2023 YT. And we'll just use the default recommended uh, 180 days. Actually, screw that. We'll use 730, the maximum time. And now you see that on secret creation, if we expand this, we can actually copy the secret for further use. Okay, so make sure to save that secret. Let's go to Notepad over here for the time being. You should do a much more secure job of saving it, but in this case for this video, I'm just going to save it inside this Notepad. So make sure to do the same because we're going to need that for manual setup for a new service connection. Okay, so next, in order to create a service connection the manual way, we have to get a couple more pieces of information. First, we are going to paste the app secret to where we see app secret equals and the every, everything else that we need is going to be subscription ID, subscription name, app ID, and tenant ID. So let me go ahead and show you how you can gather all of that. If you go to overview for your app registration, app application ID is where we're going to put the app ID. And for subscription, you can simply just go to subscriptions over here. If you click on this, you'll see the subscription ID is found over the subscription ID. Subscription name is simply over here, Microsoft Partner Network. And finally, for tenant ID, if you're not aware of it, you can go to tenant properties inside Azure portal, and it'll show you your tenant ID that you can paste right in here. So this is all the information that we're going to need in order to create the service connection. So there is one last thing that we need to do. We created the app registration, but it currently has no access to anything. Just like when we were creating with automatic, it gave us the option to choose a resource group to give access to it by default. We just created the app registration, but it's not associated with anything. So we're going to go to the subscription that we want, access control, IAM, role assignments. We're going to add a role assignment. In this case, since I'm going to use this SPN and service connection to deploy everything I want for Azure, I'm going to put it as an owner. And we're going to go to select members. And let's just type in what it was. These are the two that were automatically added, so we can add those two if we wanted to. But let's just add the manually created code to HYT automation review and assign. So now this app registration has access to everything that's on the subscription, so we can deploy and perform any action that we need to. Just a reminder that you don't have to do it at subscription level. You can still give it to multiple resource groups or resources, uh, specific level scope that you need to. I just think that this is you know, the best case when you're trying to create a service connection for all things DevOps deployments. Okay, so now we're back here inside ADO. If you go to new service connection, once again, Azure Resource Manager, click on next. We're going to switch to service principle manual. Click on next. Let's bring up the information that we saved over here, subscription ID. We're just going to copy and place it over here. Let's go bring up the subscription name over here. Service principal ID is the app ID, which we're going to paste over here. The app secret is the service principal key. I think I have some white space that I selected here over here. And then finally, the tenant ID is the last missing piece. Let's go ahead and select this. So it gives you the option to verify. It's able to connect. We're just going to call this code Doge YT service con grant access to all verify and save. So those are the two ways that we can actually handle um, ADO to Azure connection. And remember these two SPNs that were created for these service connections, you can still do the same thing we did here and give them subscription wide access, but you still have to change the name of the service principle and everything. Whereas this, we already made the information upfront and we have the secret stored for further use if we need to. And, you know, it's just nice and neat. Okay, so I almost forgot to show you how to change the name of one of these auto created SPNs. So just click on one of them, go to branding and properties, and here you can change this name to something else. So code doge manual change. You can add a nice little logo, but you know that's for later. You can deep dive into it later as you need to. So if you go to get, uh, if you go back to the app registration, you see that you know we changed the name of it. So again, based on that logic, you could technically use one of the ones that are auto uh, automatically created and apply the same thing that we did for Code YT automation, the one that we manually created. But you know, I digress. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Apologies for talking fast. I was just trying to cover a simple topic while giving maximum context. So thank you and hopefully it was helpful. And
please feel free to like, subscribe, and share with other coworkers who might benefit from this.